I'm Brooke Beery, Assistant Editor of Optometry Times Magazine, and I have the pleasure of being joined today by Chief Optometric Editor, Dr. Ben Casella, who practices in Augusta, Georgia. Hi, Dr. Casella, it's such a pleasure hey. to have you here. How are you, my friend? I'm doing well, thank you for joining us. You're very welcome. So how are things in Georgia? It's starting to feel like fall yet there, your leaves still green? Our leaves are still green, um, yes, we, um, got lost a couple weekends ago, took the kids up to Pigeon Forge, did some hiking, uh, got pretty close to the Appalachian Trail. Some of the leaves are starting to turn, but down in Augusta, it's, it's, it's going to be about another month, month and a half before it gets golden. But um, yeah, the nights are getting a little cooler. Um, the high today was like 70, so everybody like had jackets on and whatnot. That's going to make a lot of people laugh, but that's cold to us, especially end of uh, September. Um, yeah. But yeah, everybody, we, we're we feeling good and staying safe and just, um, you know, keep the pedal to the metal. That's all you can ask for, really. Here in Ohio, there is a definite chill in the air, um, but it's, it's uh, we're kind of used to it, I guess I'll say. It's beginning our eight month dive into sweater season and we're used to it, so. <laughs> As one does. Yeah. Um, but I'd like to talk about one of your strongest areas of interest and that is glaucoma. Um, you're kind of our glaucoma guy, and so when we found this research, it's kind of new and exciting. Um, I knew I had to talk to you about it. It's led by a clinical trial um, led by Melbourne researchers suggesting vitamin B3 could play an important role in glaucoma management. So results of this trial showed significant improvement in the visual function of glaucoma patients who received a daily high dose of vitamin B3 for 12 weeks. This sounds pretty exciting. Um, what does this news mean for ODs and for glaucoma patients? Is B3 a solid treatment option for glaucoma? Um, not right now. At current time, we still don't have any therapy for glaucoma, which should come before lowering IOP. Uh, so the drops and um, um, surgical and laser procedures that we have for lowering intraocular pressure are, are, are still first-line therapy, and they're going to be first-line therapy for a while. But this study um, describes, in my opinion, a solid effort, which certainly needs further research to um, investigate the concept of neuroprotection, something that we can do beyond lowering IOP to protect these neurons that just die off at us at, at, at such a quicker rate in the presence of glaucoma. Um, and another thing that this study um, hits at is, is in, in glaucoma, we work so hard just to keep things from getting worse, you know? Right. And, and this study actually shows some improvement in visual function with respect to glaucoma. Um, it was a small study, 50-something uh, patients uh, fit the criteria for the study, 40-something uh, patients completed the study, so the N is, is, is quite small. Um, the follow-up period of 12 weeks is quite small, uh, but it certainly points to the fact that we need, and the authors say this in their discussion, that we need longer and um, um, studies that have greater cohorts to uh, see if uh, B3 is really onto something here. There's a piece in Journal of Glaucoma, goes back to 2017, that purports that uh, supplementation with vitamin B3 may lead to a tenfold decrease in your risk of developing glaucoma. So vitamin, vitamin B3 has been uh, uh, chatted about in the field of glaucoma for um, several years now, and this is this is a very intriguing study, and I'm certainly on the lookout for uh, more and larger cohorts over longer periods of time to see if this is really, really something that pans out, because vitamin B3 is relatively inexpensive, not to be pragmatic. It's inexpensive. Do you think um, glaucoma patients who maybe had seen the study or read about it online should go out and look for B3, or are you saying kind of hold off on that and and not jump into B3 right away? We need more research for sure. Um, now that said, if your IOP is like really low, like if it's like eight or nine, if it's approaching episclerovenous pressure and it's really not gonna get any lower and you're continuing to progress, you know, 
maybe go get you some B3, go get you some ginkgo, you know, um, but um, um, uh, no, there's, there's, there's no reason to change current protocol at this point. Okay, good to know. And uh, for fellow ODs, do you think they should keep their eyes on B3 or maybe prescribe it? Yeah, that's a really good question. For fellow ODs, they should go to pubmed.gov once every month or so and just type in the word glaucoma and just see what the peer reviewed research says out there. You should not rely solely on conferences or solely on um, the, the uh, publications to which you prescribe. You should be actively going out and looking at peer reviewed research on a monthly basis, uh, especially if you do a lot of glaucoma uh, or just, just insert disease X into the search box. Um, but we certainly have to stay abreast. You know, we have a fiduciary obligation to uh, tell patients what's good and what's not good, but uh, no reason to change current protocol yet. But I'll be on the lookout for a, a, um, um, a larger cohort. I do like that the study was randomized. Uh, I do like that it was double masked, double blind. Um, we just need to be able to uh, see reproducible data over a longer period of time with a larger cohort of uh, patients. And that's the message. That that's probably already in the makings now. So I'm, 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 I'm excited at the concept, and certainly, the, um, the, the, whatever word I'm reaching for, the, the silver tuna per se is, 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 is something that we can do besides just lowering IOP. Right. And um, vitamin B3 seems to um, perhaps have some holding power here but it shouldn't come below the ocular um, hypotensive medications that we already prescribe. Well, it's always great talking to you, Dr. Casella. Thank you so much for seeing me today and thank you for great information. You're very welcome. Good to see you too. Stay safe, wear a mask, everybody. That's right, wear a mask. Thank you. <laughs>